Well, thank you, Chairman Anzi. Thank you, Director Mulvaney, for joining us. I got to say, you got a tough job today. I don't envy you. You have been asked to come before this committee to explain the unexplainable and defend the indefensible, as I think my colleagues on this side have pointed out, especially Senator Warner and Senator Van Hollen. Uh, you know, President Trump spent his campaign promising workers he'd stand with them. He promised seniors he'd protect their care. He promised the middle class he'd make the economy work for them. What we have in front of us today with this budget is a perfect summary of all the ways those promises have been broken. His promise not to cut Medicaid is broken. Promise not to cut Social Security program, broken. Promise to help workers get training, broken in this budget. Promise to focus tax cuts on the middle class, not the rich, broken. And his promise to provide, quote, insurance for everybody, well, that was, uh, that was better and lower cost, that's not just been broken, it's pretty much been shattered. So a lot of promises broken, and we are all looking forward to see how you explain this. But I do want to say I'm very glad to see it's not just Democrats, but Republicans who are already coming out and rejecting this budget. But fortunately, we here were able to reach a deal on the fiscal year 2017 spending bill for one reason and one reason alone. And that is that Democrats and Republicans joined together. They ignored President Trump's absurd and extreme budget proposal. We rejected the ill-conceived and expensive border wall paid for on America's taxpayers' dime. We rejected the attempts to cut Planned Parenthood. We rejected the $18 billion in cuts that were sent to us the last time. And we got a budget done and moved our country forward. So having said all that, I do want to focus today on this. I want to start by asking a question on President Trump's broken promise on health care that you built into this budget. Now, families in my state and across the country are frankly scared about the health care chaos that President Trump is causing. On Monday this week, the Trump administration requested another three-month delay in the House's frivolous lawsuit to take away payments that help to lower the cost uh, of care for working families. Now, experts all agree and have told us continuously that this administration's threats to end the payments are driving premiums up today. And I want to just ask you about this because the LA Times re recently reported that CMS, CMS Administrator Seema Verma attempted to use those payments to try to pressure our insurers to support the Trump Care Bill. Director Mulvaney, do you believe it would be wrong to use families' health care as a political bargaining chip? Senator, under the theory that I try and find things to agree with with folks uh, more than things I disagree with, um, you mentioned that people are scared about the chaos. You, you, uh, you uh, attribute that to the chaos of the Trump Care program. That's what insurers have been telling us. And what I'm telling you is that people where I'm from are scared about the status quo. People in Iowa well, that, are scared that, about losing their coverage under Obamacare. Look, People are scared I, in South Carolina about... What I'm Carolina asking you is about, specifically about uh, Seema Verma. Have you been part of any of those discussions about cost-sharing subsidies with Administrator Verma in, or in any way influenced her conversations? I, I have been included in various conversations over the course of the last four months about the cost-sharing reduction payments. Yes, ma'am. Have you talked with uh, her about specifically talking to insurers and threatening them not to support it? No. What I do know is that we made the payments in May like we said that we would. Uh, we've made no commitments to the payments that are due in June and that uh, we are considering all the options on whether or not we will make those payments. Okay. Well, let me, uh, let me ask you about your comments about the CBO score of the House bill. Okay. Given what we just learned from CBO just last night, do you think the Trump Care Bill keeps President Trump's promise to provide, quote, better insurance to, quote, everyone? Absolutely, because so many people don't have any coverage now at all. Any coverage would be better if you live in a, in a county that doesn't have any providers. And well, more and more counties are facing zero providers. I live in a state where we're down to one, Senator. Okay. One. I'm just going to say that is not what the CBO report says, and people are not going to find that credible when they lose their care. They know what's causing this, but I only have a few seconds left. I do want to make a couple points. I do want you to know I was really disappointed 
to see that you attempted to block the Office of Government Ethics request for information on which former lobbyists are receiving secret waivers now from President Trump. I think that is really wrong. And I urge you to reverse course and cooperate with the Ethics Office, and I assure you that we are going to keep pushing on that. I wanted to let you know that, number one. Um, num I, I'm happy to respond to that, Senator, if you give me the time. Okay, well, since my time's out, let me just make this point, and I want to make it very clearly, and I want everyone to hear this. OMB has indicated that it is reviewing a rule related to the birth control mandate. Should this yet be another step by the administration to roll back women's health and rights, you better expect a very strong opposition from this senator, Democrats, and women across the country, and I just want you to know that. I'm not aware of that specific detail, but I, I hear what you're saying. Thank you.